Hello friends, welcome to Code Semantic and welcome to the video tutorial of ASP.NET Web API. So this is the part one of crude operation in ASP.NET Web API using entity framework. So let us switch to Visual Studio and let us see the prerequisite for crude operation. So here I have created one new Web API application in Visual Studio that is named as Web API Advance. So this is an empty Web API application. So I hope you are aware of creating a new Web API application in Visual Studio. So here uh, it is currently empty. We are going to add the things that are necessary for performing the crude operation. So before uh, starting in Visual Studio, let us understand the table structure that I have already created in SQL Server. So let us switch to SQL Server. So here I have already created this DB named as Web API DB as well as there are two tables one is category and another one is product. You can see the columns also the so category table is having category ID as primary key and then second one is CNAME which represents the category name. Now product is you can say a child table of category there is one to many relationship between category and product. So product is having product ID as primary key, then P name represents the product name, then we have price, then stock and then after category ID as a foreign key. So here I have entered some data in both the tables. Okay. So category is having these two categories, electronics and mobile and as well as I entered some data for product table also. So here are the foreign keys that we have already created in the category table. So one and two are the category IDs that represents as a foreign key in the product table. So here we are going to perform the crude operation on this product table. Okay. So let us switch to Visual Studio again. So as I mentioned in the beginning of this video that we are going to perform this crude operation using entity framework. So if you are not aware of entity framework, I'll suggest you to watch the entity framework video tutorial before starting this. I'll attach a link of that video tutorial in the description below. So our first step is to add the entity framework data model. So first step basically we have to create the EDMX file and here time being I'm going to use database first approach okay later on when we create a multi-tier application at that time we will do the same thing using code first approach so in this video we are going to prefer entity framework database first approach so first of all let us add entity framework data model so right click on your project now say add sorry right click then add and then after here to say new item now here from left hand side panel you have to choose data and from here you have to choose adio.net entity data model now the next thing you have to specify the name so let us say web api db you can name it anything so i am mentioning it as a web api db say add now here it will ask you to choose the approach so as i said we are going to use database first approach so you will uh, we will choose ef designer from database click on next now here you have to create a new connection then after you have to specify the server name so whatever is the server name of your local machine you have to put it here so this is my local machine server name uh, so my sql server is having windows authentication that's why i have chosen windows authentication otherwise if you are using sql server authentication in that case you have to mention the username and password also so let me choose windows authentication then the next step is to choose your database so our db name is web api db right so just select your db and then say test connection 
so now our test connection is succeeded say ok and here also hit ok button so this connection string it is showing here in the below right you can see here initial dialog is nothing but a database name what is the provider all the things are mentioned here and this is the name of our key in web.config file okay again hit next button now we are going to use entity framework 6.x so just select it and say next now here it will allows you to select the database object that you want to represent in visual studio through entity framework so currently we only have a tables so i'm going to select the tables only so i'll select both the tables okay if you are having any views or stored procedure you can select it also so these are some again instruction for us uh, again i'm not going to deep into this because i already covered all these things in my entity framework tutorial so please watch that video now let us say finish okay it may take some time because now it is installing entity framework 6.x or whatever is the latest version so that's why it may take some time okay now our entity framework is installed you can see here too many references get added here initially these many references were not there and similarly both the tables appear here and as i told there is one to many relationship between our category and product so same relationship it is showing here so let us collapse this now see first of all we'll go to web.config file there i'll show you the connection string see this is our connection string name web api entities and this is the connection string okay now this is our edmx file where we can see the pictorial representation of all our database object and similarly you can see db context class also so here db context class basically represent your database and our db context class name is web api entities which is inherited from db context and here we are providing the connection string name through the constructor and these are the two tables in our db that is categories and products so these two properties are created similarly two classes get created for our both the tables this is category and the another one is product okay so you can see that whatever proper whatever columns we have mentioned there all these columns are available in the product class similarly product is having relationship with category so navigation property is also there similarly in category table also sorry in category class also you can see the properties which represents the columns in the category table and this is the navigation property okay so after making sure this the next step is we are going to create one view model okay and through that view model what we are going to do we are going to perform the crude operations related to our product table see as you can see in our product table we have category id as a foreign key but to the user we are going to show the category name we are not going to show category id we are going to show the category name but our product model which is representing our database table do not contain that but for our ui purpose or for uh, for our output purpose you can say we need a category name so that's why we are going to create a category model so i'll just create one model in my web api i'll say add I'll say class so let us name our class as product view model okay now say add now it will contain almost all the same properties of our product class and one extra property 
which represents a category name. So let me copy this. And as well as I'll add one category name property. So it is going to be string. So let us call it as category name or C name, whatever you want to call. Similarly, here I'll name this as product name. So we are done with our product view model. So basically, whenever we are going to perform any operation through Web API, our data get stored or persisted in this product view model object and then after it gets stored in this product model which is actually representing our database table. Now the next step is to create a controller and through which our client is going to interact with all the crude operation. So let us create a controller right click on it and say add controller so this is our web api controller i'm choosing web api 2 controller empty because from scratch we are going to write everything so choose empty controller and say add let us name our controller as product controller now in this product controller, we are going to write a code that will interact with our database table and that will insert a data into the table, it will read the data from the table, it will update the data in the table, it will delete the data in the table. Basically, the crude operation, create, read, update and delete. So, in this controller, we are going to write a method. So, this is all about part one. In the next part, we are going to implement the method that will represent our crude operation. So if you have any doubt or any concern, you can write it to the comment section. Thank you for watching.